Welcome back designers to Kat Sylvia Designs. I'm Kat and for today's video we are talking about the three jewelry tools that any designer needs in their arsenal, plus one additional tool that I think you'll find really helpful. Now I am going to be talking about some different brands here today, so I'm going to link everything down in that description box below. So let's go ahead and dive right in. On my table, I have a pair of flush cutters, a pair of round nose pliers, and a pair of chain nose pliers. So there you go, those are the three tools that you're going to need to start jewelry making. Now these are gonna be able to help you with things like opening and closing jump rings, simple wire loops, wrapped wire loops, and even some basic wire wrapping. So if you go no further than just these three, you are good to get started. I do wanna talk about this particular brand. This is the Tronix. Now, there are a couple things that I wanna point out. One is gonna be the handle here. This is a really nice, soft, but sturdy grip handle. You can see there's not a lot of give, but it sits really nicely in the hand. Now, these are the smaller versions, so when I bring out the larger version here, I just want you to see kind of side by side the size difference in this. So I wanna do a little experiment here. Let me put these to the side. I'm gonna bring in a ruler. And let me know in the comments below if this is helpful for you to kind of see a ruler just so you know. So from my index, or excuse me, from my middle finger there, all the way down to about the crook of my thumb is about five inches. So I just want you to keep that in mind as you're seeing this in my hand, right? So it's a smaller plier, but what I like about it is I control the plier with these three fingers. And then I use my index finger for kind of just adjusting like and guiding where that's going to be. So I kind of rest my finger there and it kind of sits along my thumb right in the fat of my thumb right there. So I feel like I get a really good grip and I can use it easily. I don't have a lot of hand fatigue uh, and I can get that nice little flush cutter tip. This is probably one of my favorite tips to use. I don't like generally <laughs> the um, kind of more curved oval tip there. I really like this nice sharp tip of this Tronix plier. Now just for a little kind of side by side, so that's how the smaller one looks in my hand. Now the larger one is still comfortable, don't get me wrong, but you see how it comes almost down near to my wrist and I have to kind of keep my fingers up a little higher here so I don't really need a lot of this extra um, kind of this extra handle. It just doesn't work for me. Now if you have larger hands or if you want a little bit of a wider, bigger grip, this can be great. So I love that Tronix does offer both versions. Now I'm gonna kind of set these side by side and put the ruler down in between so you can see just a little bit of that size difference there. Now let's say you don't want the Tronix. You're not ready. These are very expensive. I totally understand that we want to keep things cost effective. I want to respect that for you guys, especially if you are starting out. So what I would recommend, there are some other brands. There are Zuron, which are really great. That's kind of a mid-level brand. And they do have all of these tools here. And they also have great tools by the Beadsmith that come in like kind of little starter packs. There's also a great one that I've linked below. It's called Work Pro. And in that one, you'll get all the tools that you need plus a few extras. So it'll allow you to sort of experiment with some other tools, see what you like, see what fits in the hand. But really, when you're looking into tools, there are three things that I want you to think about. I want you to think about the cost. Really stick to what is comfortable for you. I also want you to have a real conversation about what is comfortable for you. You know, really feel like you can go and try things out, but also, when you're considering cost, think about the consistency. Now, I make jewelry a lot. <laughs> um, it is my full-time thing, it is what I do, so I really like these professional grade pliers. Again, I love Tronix, they're made in the US. Uh, I, I can't say en enough good things about them, but if you're not ready for these, what I recommend you do is buy one of those multi-pack ones, keep it on hand because what's neat is that when you are ready to upgrade, you can absolutely get these tools or a different brand. I'm not, I'm not, you know, totally sold on these. So if you have another brand like a Lindstrom, please, um, you know, seek those out. But, but you can use that initial plier set that you got 
as your show set, as I like to call it, you know, I find myself often having to do repairs when I'm at a show or a showcase, uh, you know, anything like that. And I don't like to bring my really nice pliers with me. It's just, maybe I'm crazy, but you know, I've lost too many pliers and I'd really like to not do that again. Uh, so I would never bring my Tronex to that. So if you ever see me at a show, I probably won't have these on me. But I will have, you know, like my Zurons or some other plier that's a little bit more inexpensive. Um, and please know that when I say inexpensive, it doesn't mean that they're cheap. There are definitely cheap pliers out there for sure. But some of these options that are more inexpensive are still really, really great, strong quality. So I stand behind those as well. Now, if you want to see these tools in action, I will leave a link above so you can see the three basic jewelry making tools I said earlier, but I know you're probably here to wonder what that fourth tool is that I had mentioned. So I'm going to scooch these out of the way and introduce you to my favorite tool, the bent nose plier. Now this is a really fun tool. I find myself using this in almost every design. Anytime I'm opening and closing jump rings, I love to work with this guy. And the reason being, if you're trying to open and close jump rings like this, where you're kind of just moving them back and forth and like you might be knocking your pliers together or just like this is an uncomfortable position for your hands, what I like to do is I'll put my chain nose plier in my left hand and my bent nose plier in my right hand. I'm right handed. And then I can open them like this. And you see my hands are nice and far apart and it's just so much easier for me. I love it. I think they're just wonderful little tools. And if you look at the nose of this Tronix in particular, you can see that it's got a really good angle to it, but it's also really nice and slim when you're looking at it kind of down the barrel, because then you'll see really up close, there we go, that it has a nice flush closure. So this will sneak in places that your other pliers can't necessarily get and it keeps your hand out of the way from your design. So that is why I love it. I suggest you get it for sure. There are bent nose pliers in the other brands that I had mentioned as well, but Tronix is, of course, as you figured, my favorite, my go-to. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this look at these pliers. Please take a look at the descriptions below and really shop around. Find what is best for you. I can't stress that enough. Thanks so much for watching, designers. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And also, just to remind you, I have put all of those links for everything that you've seen here and everything that I've discussed in that description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.